Hello everyone, TGS is wrapping up right now as I'm making this video, and yeah, we got some new Professor Layton and the New World of Steam news. Uh, finally, it has been a long time, but we got to see a new trailer, as well as there being a playable demo there, meant that we got to see a little bit of extra gameplay. And I wanted to go over some of the things we learned um, that might not have been as obvious. So. First off, I wanted to point out some changes that I noticed from the early like release window gameplay trailer they showed um, last year. One of the main things I noticed is I do feel like the gameplay looks different, and it really stood out to me that that feature where the foreground characters, you know, Leighton and Luke, you would see them in the foreground when you were searching the environment, that seems to be gone. I only see in the gameplay now in a first person perspective entirely, where then you have the, you know, D-pad options to choose where you go. I do not see those characters in the foreground in any of the new gameplay. And so I don't know if they took that out, if we've seen that from you know, that's from like a different angle, a different perspective you can see the world at a different point. But I'm guessing that's not in the final game. Uh, we don't know for sure. But it kind of makes me think, you know, maybe that footage being in development over a year ago, that was a little bit of a concept mock-up they did, and they decided not to go that way. But um, I was a little disappointed to see that, because that was actually my favorite change for the presentation. I actually really liked having them gazing off into the environment uh, while you searched around. But yeah, that is not anywhere to be seen in the new gameplay. One of the other things I wanted to point out is the controls. Um, if you have not seen, they did give us all of the controls that were included in the demo. The controls are thus. So the demo was done using a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. Uh, they did not use Joy-Cons, they did not, you know, try it in handheld mode, of course. They're all set up at demo stations. We actually got a nice picture of what the demo stations look like. Um, so yeah, they just used uh, standard button controls. You could see on the UI even, you know, you use the D-pad to select go to locations. You move your cursor with your analog stick. Um, the plus button submits an answer. The minus button restarts it. So on and so forth. If you need to reach, rotate pieces, you can see you use the R and the L. But yeah, we do not know of the full slate of control options, but this is what we have for standard Pro Controller on the TV. Uh, the Catriel game did also have uh, pointer controls using you know, a Joy-Con, and that game did have touch controls in handheld mode. Obviously, Layton is very well known because of its time on the DS as, you know, being a handheld game that you can, you know, tap on the screen and draw lines and stuff. So I'm guessing this will have the same full suite of options as the Catriel game. But for now, this is what we have control wise. So we don't know have the full picture. We also learned about Coindar. Uh, Coindar is a cute little robot buddy, and you can enter essentially Coindar mode, and that's how you search for hint coins. Um, I think that's cute, though. I do feel like possibly going into like a separate mode, having to activate it to find hint coins, if that's required, could be annoying, a bit tedious, if you just can't search around whenever. But, you know, it is what it is. And we don't have the full story on everything Coindar does. Or if, you know, he just helps you, but technically you could randomly click around without him. That remains to be seen. One other thing that is important to note is they did confirm it is a simultaneous worldwide release in 2025. So any concerns about a delayed localization or anything can be laid to rest. We also got to see the new puzzle fail animation. We've seen 
the success before, but now we can see what happens when you fail. It's very cute. We also got to see a few puzzles, and I would say overall we know uh, Quiznock is doing them, a new group, because obviously the designer of the old puzzles has passed away. But I would say they seem very faithful, very in the spirit of Professor Layton. The mouse puzzle, we are, you have to figure out which you know crate you can go under to get the cheese, is a nice little kind of perspective puzzle that feels very in line with Professor Layton. Now, the most contentious thing, and the thing I wanted to close out by talking about, of course, is we see the entire um, look of the game, all the cutscenes, all the animations are done in-engine in their 3D models. Um, there's no 2D portraits, which, of course, on the 3DS, they kind of moved away from the traditional, like, portrait thing anyway and were you know doing the 3d models when you talked but now they went even further and it does seem like all the cutscenes are in engine in 3d as opposed to the uh, 2d you know anime cutscenes that they had and obviously there have been a lot of people that have been disappointed not seeing that 2d animation again um, I was as well it was funny I never really considered it. It wasn't something I even thought about, even though we hadn't seen anything like that. It never really popped in my head because I just, when I picture Leighton, I always picture that. So I didn't automatically assume it wouldn't be there, even though I guess I probably should have. But I did want to talk a little bit about why I think that could end up being fine, even though I know it's definitely a loss. I do think some people might forget or not realize off the top of their head that generally the amount of like fully animated cutscenes that were you know really nice in that style instead of just the story being delivered to you while the characters just like stand there and talk usually it was only like 30-ish minutes of actually nice hand-drawn 2d cutscenes um they vary but there's a lot of 32, 34 minute, you know, totals between the different games in the franchise. It started out even smaller than that. And so the one big benefit of not having them as the main way to do your cutscenes is I imagine they can do a lot more. You know, we see the Gunman King Joe, you know, cutscene and it looks nice. You know, it's flashy, it's moving, it's well animated. And generally, again, the all the well-animated stuff kind of had to be left for those 2D scenes in the old game. And over the course of the whole thing, like I said, it might be a half an hour total. But if this is a bigger game, and they did confirm this has more puzzles than any game in the latent series before, I could see this game having a lot more time dedicated to, you know, cutscenes in the grand runtime. It makes complete sense, you know, if they're all in engine, they can do a lot more. The games are, I've always really thought of Professor Layton, you know, they're, people call them puzzle games because that's your main gameplay, but, you know, I've always thought of them as a mix of like a puzzle adventure slash even visual novel, you know, and that means story is huge for the game. And with that being the case, not being limited by you know, technically like a budget, I assume paying a studio. And in the past, I believe they've worked with PA Works, a Japanese animation studio, to help them do those cutscenes. Not having to do specially drawn 2D scenes probably is actually more affordable, just keeping it in engine. And I could see, and in fact, I would say I flat out expect, instead of having half an hour worth of cutscenes, I do expect a few hours worth of cutscenes. I think it'll be a lot bigger, and if that does allow them to flesh out and deliver, you know, an even grander story, which Professor Layton has done a really good job in the story department before, so that is a high bar, we'll have to see, but it does make me optimistic, and I think that is one of the potential big positives. With that being said, on the kind of, you know, devil's advocate positive side there, the other side 
is I do feel like that is a big part of the identity of Layton, that 2D animation. You know, I, I remember when I first tried Professor Layton back in the day on the DS, I'm pretty sure the comment I read on some forum or some review or something was like, oh, it's like a puzzle game and then half a British anime. That's how it was always described to me. It's a puzzle game with a British anime in it. And I always found that super charming. Like, that was a big selling point to me. Like, seeing that written out that way it was like, oh, yeah, that sounds cool. And I feel like that is such a part of the identity that not having any is a bit weird. To the point where what I really wish they would do is have, like, an opening movie slash even a closing movie that was hand-drawn. And again, you know, it's not 30 minutes of cutscenes. It's a minute and a half, two minute opening movie, and maybe the ending in a two minute movie that kind of sends you off into the sunset or however this thing ends. That is done that way. You know how like RPGs will have their opening movie that's like really high budget CGI. And then the in-game cutscenes are all in engine usually, or most of them are, but they got their big flashy CG opening. I think for Layton, it would really make a lot of sense to have you know, the hand-drawn 2D opening movie. And then, you know, while you're in-game telling the story, it stays 3D. Um, so I really wish just kind of paying tribute to the legacy of 2D. Um, I would like to see them do it in that way. But I understand why, you know, spreading all that throughout the entire game is unlikely and would be more expensive. But... It does feel weird to not have anything like that. I also think an interesting, like, in-between would have been if you talk to characters, they actually brought back, like, 2D portraits instead of having that be in 3D. Um, like I said, even on the 3DS, they'd already started doing that, you know, the full 3D conversation thing. But a lot of RPGs, you know, especially JRPGs, you'll see have, you know, kind of the talking head portraits that are, you know, just a 2D cutout-looking character. Um, while your character is talking in the background. Um, that would have been like going backwards from the 3DS in terms of the 3D models, but that would have been an interesting, like, kind of meet you in the middle kind of thing there. So anyway, that is my thoughts so far on what we saw with Layton. I really think overall it looks good. Like I said, I really think the puzzles and everything look very faithful. Um, we got a glimpse of the map. It looks pretty sizable, and we obviously don't know, you know, exactly all the locations you'll go, if it, you know, takes you off in different directions or not. But I also think the story shows some promise. You know, obviously we have the kind of classic, okay, Gunman King Joe clearly isn't going to be a ghost. He's a projection or something, right? How are they doing it? How are they tricking people? Um, you know, he doesn't want the world to progress any further, which to me says potentially, you know, all this advancements in, you know, mechanical advancements in the Steam world are potentially, like, bad for the world, right? They're getting kind of further away, and maybe Gunman King Joe is a good guy. But we'll have to wait and see. But regardless, overall, I do think it looks very good. I am very hopeful. Um, but I do understand the immediate reaction was, man, wait a minute, there's no 2D animation here. But like I said, I think there's a real understandable reason for it, and I do think it does allow them to potentially have more story and more cutscenes spread throughout the game in a instead of just having to deliver most of the story with characters kind of standing there, and then a few minutes here and there of you know bigger budget scenes. It might be able to more naturally tell the story. So I'm hopeful. I'm definitely going to keep tabs on it. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like and subscribe. I do plan on covering Fresh Relate more in the future. So if that's your thing, we'll see you next time.